I gain innovative ideas to really pour into kids. It's an experience like you won't get anywhere else. Do I think it was worth coming down here? Yes, I do. The knowledge that we have acquired while we're down here, what we're going to take back home uh, is well worth it. Why should you come to C3 with us next year? If you want to build relationships with your church family, if you want to go to the next level, if you want to experience God in such a powerful way, you need to get around greatness, and this is how you do it. C3 has been amazing. I've been able to learn how to be a greater leader. The one thing that really stood out to us was that it is easier to build a child than to repair an adult. So many new things that come at you, so many hurdles and challenges that we didn't know how to address or when we were going to get to where we want to go and how to set goals. And being here has just given us such a drive. I've really enjoyed watching all of our people just bond and so excited about what they've experienced here. I know that when we head back home, everyone's gonna take that energy and that excitement and the knowledge and the relationships and we're gonna put it into practice and we are going to see big, big things happen. We're gonna see mountains moved in our own communities and the rest is gonna be good. You know, the biggest thing that Fellowship Church and C3 Conference really does is they take you under their wing. When you come to this conference, they will remember who you are the next time you show up. We had an amazing time. We had so much fun in Dallas. I think we made history because some crazy things happened. There was some bonding that happened. There was some learning, some growths, a lot, a lot of laughs. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. And we were so excited to see about 50 mountain movers from the awesome. four state area head down to Texas. And I'm, I'm telling you guys, it, it was just, it was awesome. so much fun. But we want to extend a very special, sincere, heartfelt thank you. I know though there were many of you that wanted to go, you were unable, we totally understand. But we want to say thank you to those that were able to pull it off because it didn't come without a sacrifice. We know that. It took time. It took money. Some of you sacrificed your, your, your paid time off. Some of you guys didn't get paid while you were off. So you lost money and then you lost more money by spending money on food and fuel and hotels. But you made it there and not one person came up to me and said, you know, I'm not glad that I came. Not one person. There was, a, there was an incredible amount of synergy and excitement. And here's what I'm most excited about is that I know that all of those who went, now they're back and they are so pumped. They are so fired up. I know that the result is that we are going to take hope to the hopeless. We're going to bring strength to those who are weak. We're going to see mountains moved in people's lives. And we're going to see more people come to Christ than we've ever seen before in the history of this church. We are excited about what is yet to come. Are you excited this morning? Woo! Amen! I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Everybody's so pumped up. Awesome. Can't wait till next year. Well, last week we did launch our new series Q&A and you and I were not together in this room because it was kind of icy, but we did a Facebook Live only service. So if you didn't get to see it, I just want to encourage you to go back to our podcast, which you can just download on your phone or to the YouTube channel or Facebook Go back and watch it because it was really foundational to what we're going to be talking about over the next three weeks, all right? It. It's a foundation, and it, it honestly, it applies to any relationship. This series, we're talking about relationship goals, so not just marriage, not just parenting. We're going to cover it all, all right? We're going to cover it all. So go back and watch part one That's so that right. you can get caught up. going to cover a broad spectrum. Go back right. and check it out. Okay, so... Um, those of you who have been watching Facebook Live, you may have noticed a video that we put out a few weeks ago. It's kind of funny because we welcomed you into our messy, chaotic our struggles. life, into the real struggles. And we like being transparent. We like having fun. And you might as well keep it real. In moments where you want to cry, you might as well just laugh, right? And just have fun right. with it. And so, when you think you're going to rip the head off of the person that's with you, just go live. Exactly. Like, seriously, you just go live it. All of a sudden, it's amazing how it the tone, the countenance, the body language, it it's all like, changes. Ooh, people are watching me. He's about, ladies, listen, he's about to rip your head off. He is so angry. He's so upset. Just beep, go live. 
It'll change. And just like that. Just like that. And he'd be like, oh, well, well, well. wait a second. Okay. This is a third service only. Okay. Ooh. How many of you bonus. guys ever grab your phone? You, you, like you're in the, you're in this heated discussion, right? You're just having it out. I don't and know all what you're of a sudden the phone it. rings and you go, hello, exactly. this is Misty. And everybody in your family's like, what? Are you kidding me? That right? was so fake. You were so mad in the moment. It happens. It's real life. All right. Well, today is part two. Here we All go. right. So, so we were driving down the road. We, you probably saw the video where um, we're driving down the road, and all of a sudden, our sweet minivan is not driving so sweet. It's a nice ride, but something. Don't be jelly. And she noticed uh, a little. She noticed right before I did. She said, honey, something's not quite right with the van. And I said, yeah, you know what? You're right. It's, uh, it, it's kind of, there's this. A little louder than normal. <laughs> sound while I'm driving and it's feeling a little sluggish and it's kind of pulling to the right. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness. So as any good man would do, I pulled over and I had her check it out. And so she got out and she looked at it and she said, yeah, sure enough, the tire is going flat. So again, as any good man would do, I said, get in, honey. And I went as fast as I possibly could to try to make it to the nearest gas station. We were on Highway 10. I was trying to make it to Get Her Done. You know, you live in Northeast Oklahoma when the nearest gas station is called Get Her Done. All right. So we are flying to try to make it to the gas station. I'm telling you guys, like within an eighth of a mile, I'm thinking to myself now, <laughs> I'm not a mechanic, okay? But I don't think it's good to ride on the rim. Right. It could do some damage, right? I think it can do some damage. So oh, I had to give it up. I had to just bite my pride. I had to pull over, and we began the process of changing the flat tire. And it's interesting how we have such wonderful people that live in our great state. You know, as we're pulling off, you know, people Samaritans. are waving, just waving, and not with all fingers, but, you know, they're waving, and we're like, you can stop and help. Maybe you know with I mean? one. Mainly with one. Just great people. Just waving. And that's not the first time that's happened to me on Highway 10. Another no. time I was driving the church bus, and it was driving kind of slow. It was having some issues. It was having some issues. I was driving kind of slow. And about a 90-year-old man passes me. All right, listen. There's two of them. We were loaded with kids, too. Two of them. wrong. And one, one, of the, one of the guys flings the side door open, gives me both birds, and says, Get off the road! Who swings wide open the door driving down the, the highway at 65? Shows me his bony fingers. Wrong. That was wrong. wrong. It's something about Highway 10. I don't know what the bird. Highway. Don't know. I don't know. Anyway. So, so we pull over and I'm thinking, okay, this is going to be easy peasy. I've changed a bunch of tires. We were just on our way to an appointment. This was not convenient. How many of you guys have ever had a flat tire when it was convenient? No. Mm, never. never. Is convenient. So, um, so I began the process. I know where the jack is. I'm at the back. I lift the hatch and I, I get the jack out. And then I start looking around in the carpet. And here's, here's what's interesting about this sweet minivan. And this is why it's so sweet. We've had it for like eight years, okay? And we've never had a flat tire in this vehicle. Never. Praise God. Never oh, had a flat tire. That's a sweet ride. And her mom and dad lives on this gnarly, nasty dirt road with lots of sharp rocks. We've traveled it many times, and we've never had a flat tire, okay? So I'm looking in the back of the van, and, you know, I'm thinking there must be like a flap in the carpet where if I peel it back, there's going to be some sort of access where I can drop the tire down. And I'm feeling around the carpet. I'm looking. I am pulling off panels to the plastic. I'm putting the seats down. Guys, I cannot find. I cannot find the spare tire. I looked everywhere in the back of that van, and I could not find it anywhere. I got down on my back, went marine mode, and I get under the back, and I'm like, <laughs> it's, honey, it's low. there's no spare tire in this van. There is no spare tire in this van. Stupid Chrysler dealers. They made a car and it put a spare tire in it. I'm like, okay, so 10 minutes, I'm looking all over the van and there is no spare tire. I'm like, stupid Chrysler people manufacture defect. They made a van with no spare tire. Stupid. 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 By now we're late for our appointment. So we're late. We're I'm scratching frustrated. my head. I'm thinking there are no other options. I'm going to have to walk. I don't know what to do. Then... My wife, God bless her, she has this incredibly genius idea. It's 
right. It, Tell them what happened. It happens more what, often than what not. You, what did you but think? It of? took me a while. What did you it think? It took of? me a while. So didn't even, first, didn't even I'm thinking, cross my mind. First, I'm thinking, who am I going to call? Right? Which one of you are going to come to my rescue? So I'm thinking, whose number do I have? Who am I going to call? We don't have AAA. And then I'm thinking, this is going to be humiliating. They're all going to make fun of us forever because we're on the side of the road. People are flying birds at us, and we don't even have a spare tire in a van we've owned for eight years. This is ridiculous. So. All of a sudden, I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. It's cold outside, and ding, 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 ding. And where are you? I got an idea. Where are you? Where are you? In the front seat with the in heated the seat. In the front with the heat on. Duh. Okay. Like I'm ruining my outfit by getting underneath the car. Not happening. So I have this brilliant idea, and I'm thinking, Tell wait em. a second. Tell them. Don't they make, like, a manual when they make these cars? Isn't there, like... A manual? I said, why, honey, yes. I think manufacturers do make what they call owner's manuals. We should read it. So I'm like, where would that be? I don't so know. So I'm thinking the only logical mm. place might be this glove, glove box. compartment. So I drop it down, and of course, you got to move, where like, you keep the, napkins. The, the ketchup and the mustard and, like, whatever other things your children shove in there. Yes. And the napkins. And lo and behold, There's I an find manual. this awesome owner's manual, That's right. which I've never pulled out before. And so I'm thinking to myself, okay, Chrysler, show me where you where didn't put the tire. You didn't put the tire. So I'm flipping through it because who knows if you get a manual out that is this thick, you're just going to flip through it. Through it. Man, I can't talk. Flip through it, hoping to find a picture, picture of a tire, of a tire, right? Who wants to read? So I'm flipping, flipping, nothing. No picture. Like five more minutes Stupid have gone people. by. Not only is Super there no frustrated. spare tire in the car, they didn't leave a picture for us. Right. In the manual. Okay. So I'm like, okay, last resort. Go to table the table of contents. Of contents. I open up Just the table so of contents. Inconvenient. I look at it, I look at it, I finally find where it says tire repair. All right? Yeah. So I flip to that page and lo and behold, they did put a there tire. There is a spare tire. You want to know where it's at? I did. So there was this picture, and it said, look in between the front two seats, the captain seats, in front of the console, and there's this little bitty plastic piece. So I'm looking, and I'm like, oh, there's there a is. hole right there. Sweet. Okay. So I get a pen, and I pop Pull that thing off, back. and sure enough, there's like this little, what is it called again? It's a bolt. It's a bolt. So there's this bolt right there. <laughs> it's a bolt. This is the third service, people. Give me a break. Okay. So there's this little bitty bolt. I'm like, give me that tool, that thing you're going to use to take Hit off the, the tire, right? So stick I it in stick there. it on there, and I start turning it. Right, Brad honey. drops back down. Put your back into Show them what you did. So okay. I'm turning it. Brad I'm drops back down to the ground, Green and mode. sure enough, he's like, there's, there's a, tire a tire underneath there. There's a tire. Score. Because look how low the van is. No, right? You Seriously. couldn't see a tire for Nothing. anything. So, so the tire starts coming down. Like, oh, there's a tire but here's the trick okay because it's in the middle of the stupid van you can't it's not sweet anymore you can't it's pull stupid. it all the way out and access it unless they would have done what they would have connected and they did a 15 flipping foot cable that's right 15 so feet once cable. it hits the ground you have to keep Turning and turning and turning, and the, and, the, and the cable is coiling up like this. And you're like, keep going, keep, because I can't pull it out yet, because it's too short. All right, so keep going. So then, eventually, I'm pulling on it. I'm pulling on it. And eventually, we got it out. We got it out. Then, so then we're like, okay, hurry up, get the tire I off of that get it cable. Off the cable, not at all. Because like, there's these, with this these little, thing? there's these wings. But we didn't know there was those wings I until I grabbed the manual no, again. I knew there was the wings. I couldn't get. I couldn't. Oh, you couldn't get, get it to work. That. The wings were like a T, and I couldn't get it pulled through the hole right. to get the wheel off of the cable. And we're freezing our tails off so out there. So we're like, what do we do now? Humiliated on the side of the road. So I go back to the manual, and I'm like, squeeze the wings together, There's and the tab. tire will come undone and the from wings the cable. do this. So I pulled it through. So we finally get the tire off. By now, it's been like seriously 20 minutes. We're super annoyed. We went Facebook Live to keep ourselves under check, yes. right? Because we were going to kill each other or someone driving by. Through the and so we get it all changed in about 10 minutes and off and we, we thought, go well, that was easy. down the road. That was simple. <laughs> super simple. That's right. And you're saying to yourself, what does this have to do with relationships? Well, it has Everything. a lot <laughs> to do with relationships. with relationships. Listen to me. Today, we're going to be talking about marriage. And I want you to think about something. 
That minivan was created by Chrysler. Yep. They put every part together. They determined how every piece would fit just perfect. And then, love them, they write a manual about how the entire thing is to operate. Right? Stupid people. Really not the van. More us. That didn't read the manual, so we didn't know how to operate it. Well, listen. God created marriage. It was his idea, not ours. He is the creator of the covenant. If you're having problems or you see people having problems in a marriage, what we tend to do is we tend to not go to the one who created it. We tend to not realize that there is a manual that is very black and white of exactly how to fix our problems. And if we would just open the manual, read the manual, and this is the kicker right here. This is where so many people go wrong. Actually do what it says. It seems very simple, but listen to me. Had we not opened the manual, had I not read it, the pictures didn't work, Had I not read it, and had we not done exactly what it said, we would have never been able to fix our problem. So today, we are going to open the manual. And today, we're going to answer the question, how can I have a healthy and fulfilling marriage that's not a battleground? When you hear me say battleground, I want to know what the mental picture is in your head. Because in my head, I think about two people fighting or a battle happening between one army and another. I don't think about there being peace and harmony and an enjoyable atmosphere. God created marriage to be a covenant relationship that is not only enjoyable, but the people in your home get to live in peace. It can really happen. So today, we're going to take you through six ways that you can have a healthy and fulfilling marriage and stop all the fighting. That's right. Not a battleground. Right. A healthy and fulfilling marriage. Now, preface this with the fact that some in this room, you may be single, and that's great because there couldn't be a better time for you to be that's hearing right. what you're about to hear because marriage, is, it's not about, when you're single, it's not about looking for the perfect person. Right. It's about you becoming the person that you're supposed Hold to on. be. Hold on. Back it up and say that again. That is huge. Okay. Are say you ready? Say it again. Okay. I hope you're ready. As single yes, people, you spend so much time looking for the right person, the Mr. Right, okay, or the Mrs. Right. Yeah. You're looking for the right person when really what you're supposed to be doing is becoming the right person. The biggest right. mistake that people make before they get married is they spend more time looking and less time becoming. You have to work on you. It's the only thing you can fix. It's the only thing you can change in a marriage. You've got right. to fix you, all right? And if you are married, I want to say this too. Uh, How many of you guys want a good marriage? Let me see your hand, right? Well, here's the fact. Here's the reality. You and I don't want a good marriage. We want a great marriage. We don't want to settle. We don't want to settle for less than God's very, 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 very best. Some of you may be in a single season, and that's okay. Enjoy that season and be where you are and be the best that God has called you to be. But for those that are in marriage or you're about to get married or you want to be married, I'm telling you, we're going to share some things with you that are proven through God's word that they will take your marriage to higher heights. You don't have to settle for mediocrity, but you can have an unimaginable marriage. It really can can't happen. So the first thing we're going to tell you this morning, and it is so vitally important, but so many people miss it. I hope you're listening to me. Shout out if you're listening. Are you listening? Okay, good. You're listening. It's so important, but we, we have, we have counseled people over and over and over and over. We've shared these very, very simple things. And then they come back and then we ask, well, did you, did you, did you apply those simple things that we told you, those most important things that we told you? Well, no, you don't understand. You know, she just, you know, she won't listen to me. She's nagging me all the time and doing this and doing, no, 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 no. All I hear is, listen, do the simple things. It works, but it doesn't work unless you do the work. So listen to me That's this good. morning. It doesn't work if you don't do the work. So First good. thing we're going to talk about, put God first. That's it. If you do this and just this alone, this will save a marriage. This will make a marriage. All right. I'm telling you, put God first. What does that look like? 
men, it is your responsibility as husbands, as house bands, as leaders of your home to be the spiritual man of your home, to be the leader. It is your responsibility. It's my responsibility to lead her through the word of God every single day. It's powerful. It's life changing. It will bind you together. Go through God's word together as a couple. Read it together. Pray together. I know a lot of guys, you're like, I don't really feel comfortable with that. I don't really want to pray out loud. Listen, I'm going to give you some advice. Get over it. I'm serious. Get over it because that is just the enemy trying to make his way into your head because he knows the power of prayer. And he knows when you become the man that God's called you to be and you begin linking arms with her and you begin praying over her life and over your marriage, things are going to begin to happen. Every day, I literally pray specifically that God would bless our marriage, that God would give us a love that is so pure and so powerful, that God would bind us together, that he would keep our mind focused on one another, and he would bless us, that our marriage would be a blessing to others. We pray that every single day, and God honors it, and it helps us to stay focused. The third thing is be in the house of God every time you possibly can. We say it like this, every time the doors are open. Be in God's house every time the doors are open. It's a figure of speech. We know there's sometimes you're not going to be able to make it, but I'm telling you, every single time you can, be in God's house. Get your family in the house of God. Be in prayer and be in the Word. That's right. All right, the second thing is this. Your spouse's needs have to come before your own. What? I know. So, like, that doesn't sound like doesn't fun. Like You want me to be selfless? Listen, when you were single... Your focus may have been on number one, right? The money you made, you got to spend it the way you wanted to. But the day you say, I do, and you make a covenant before God, you are now one. And your needs are not top priority. Your goal is to be selfless and to meet the need of your spouse, all right? I know that that doesn't sound like a lot of fun, but let me tell you. When God created and invented marriage, he said, hey, I've got some roles I want you to understand. And here's the challenge we have a lot of times when we're counseling people. Nobody wants to actually do their part, all right? We're focused on what I want out of this marriage. I'm focused on what I'm frustrated about. I mean, hardly ever in counseling do people sit down and tell us how wonderful their spouse is. Like, you know what? They're a really great cook, and they're really great at conversation. You know, but there's only this one thing we're struggling with. No, it's like, they do this and this and this, you know, and you're like, is there any good part? You know what I'm saying? Why would you marry them? They sound like they have problems. Seriously. No, here's what it is. We're not doing what God created each of us to do. If you go to the Bible in Ephesians chapter 5, all right, you go there and God clearly lays out what is the role of a husband and what is the role of a wife. And God says the husband is to be the leader. Why does he get to be the leader? Well, let's see. Who was created first, Adam or Eve? Adam, that's right. Adam was created first. And out of Adam's side, God takes a rib and he creates woman. And then he says, now the two are going to come back together. They're going to be one flesh. So listen to me. When two come together to become one with God in the middle, what do you see a picture of? Three, right? You see God, man, and woman. God wanted this to be a picture of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and how it all comes together as one. That was his plan. If I want to be the leader and Brad wants to be the leader, what we have is a two-headed monster. And those are ugly. All right. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter five, that a woman's job, the wife's job is to submit. And you're like, Oh, I hate that word. Don't even say it. Let me tell you, you don't understand it. All right. Submit does not mean that you have to be blind and just obey. It's not blind obedience. Submit means to come under to come under the leadership, to come under the mission, to come alongside of your spouse and say, we're going to set goals together and I'm going to walk right alongside you to accomplish them. I'm going to get under your spiritual leadership in this home, all right? It's to come alongside and come under and at the same time, it means to respect. And there is one thing that a woman has to have and one thing that a man has to have. And let me tell you, women, your husband has to have respect, And I've heard so many girls tell me, if he would just love me, 
okay? If he would just love me, I would respect him. And he says, if she would just respect me, I would love her. If we would both just do our own part, we don't have a battleground. All right, number three. Very good. All right, a husband and a wife are united in everything. A house divided cannot stand. The man and the woman have to come together. Genesis explains it like this. A man and woman, they leave home, and they leave their parents, they leave their families, and they come together, and the two become one. The two become one. One. We have this headboard in our room above our bed, and it says, the two shall be one. And when we understand that we are called to have the same mind, the same heart, and to go the same direction, God can begin to bless that. But when we have division and when we have differences, we can't get things done in our marriage. That's right. And it's not just talking about a physical oneness. It's also talking about an economic oneness. You see, when we got married, okay, and this is what so many people do right here. It's this battle with each other. When I come into the marriage, everything I owned... All right, when we got married, I had a beautiful little red Saturn, okay? It was a cute little sports car. I loved it. And Brad had this sweet little, I call this a Smurf mobile, okay. but it was like this little S10, Let's okay? Clarify. The debt that I had. It was a sweet truck. The debt I had, which was very little, but I brought it over here, and I'm like, hey, guess what, baby? It's all yours, yeah. right? And the debt he had, he says, it's all yours. Everything you have, you bring it together, okay, to become one. And then you set out your goals and you set out your future and you execute it together. Here's a huge challenge and an issue we constantly see. And that is people get together, right? And because so many people want to just remain like they want to have their own identity. They basically just want to have sex. Okay. Let's just shoot it straight. Okay. They, yeah. they are like, I love you so much. And it's really just, I just want to have sex. So let's just get married. Okay. Some of you guys are like, Whew, yeah. Never it's heard all that in, in the Bible, okay? Yeah, it's actually in the Bible. And so you come together and you're like, hey, I'm going to keep my bank account over here. I'm going to keep mine That's over good. here. And I'm going to have my own goals. And as I make my, because I work. You're right. And you work. Yeah. So I'm going to put my money right over here. I'm going to tuck it away. Let me tell you what the problem is with that. There's a huge trust problem. If you're keeping yourself a bank account over here and he's keeping one over here, what you're doing is you're saying, I'm going to keep myself a little bit of a back door. Because there's no way that someone's going to take me and I'm going to hand everything over because you know what you're doing? You're saying, you know what? I don't fully understand God's plan and I definitely don't trust the person that I think I love. One is about every single thing you own. You have your heart, your mind, your soul, your physical body, everything coming together as one. Just like I explained, you were taken out of the man's rib that's where you go back to. You become one. That's why even though divorce happens very often, one out of every two, it rips and destroys families apart because you have become one. And in the same respect, with, with so many divorces happening these days, we see a lot of blended families, a lot of blended marriages. And so what I want to encourage you with is if you get married and she brings kids into the picture, I'm telling you the two have become one. So, sir, those children have become yours. Right. You are to treat them as though they are your children, your very own children. You are to love them as they are your children. You are to provide for them as though they were your children. I'm telling you, it is our responsibility as men to take care of those kids and the two literally become one. There, are no, there might be differences, but you have to come together and get on the same page. That's right. All right, number four is this. Date your mate. And I'll say it this way. Date your mate Bam. or someone else will. Mm. All right? True. Date your mate or someone else will. Listen, what you did to get her, you need to do to keep her. When you were dating, you were enjoying Good. spending time together. You laughed. You cried. You had fun. You did things they enjoyed, whether you did or not, right? You did all of those things when you're getting to know each other. Then all of a sudden, you get married, and it's like, date. Like, are you kidding? Like, we got bills to pay. We got kids. I am not kidding, all right? You have to prioritize spending time together and enjoying life together and laughing and crying and being there for one another. It's the emotional side of love, and it's the friendship side of love that holds you together. So listen to me. You say to yourself, I got this brand new baby. I did too. I remember dropping the baby off with my mom, and the baby was, 
Ah, ah. And I'm like, oh my gosh. She's like, I'm a horrible mom. I'm leaving my baby so I can go eat dinner. What a loser mom I am. That's the enemy. All right? You have to keep God first, then your marriage, then your children. Your kids need to know. My kids are all teenagers. And when we go on a date, they're always like, ah, you're going to go on a date. You know what I mean? And I'm like, you want me to go on a date because you want me to love your dad for the rest of our life. You don't want me to not love your daddy. All right? Number five. Really, they're, they're mad because they're mad because they're, mad they're not going. They're not going. And they, and they're selfish. They're selfish. Children are they selfish. Because they want to go out. They want to go do something fun, and they're not going. That's, That's right. why they get so upset. But you better have a family night playing in there, too. Okay? That's a whole other day. That's date. right. Okay. Okay, so this one, guys, you're going to love this one. I know that you're going to love this one because I'm about to knock it out of the park. Okay. Sex should be a priority. Oh, man. Come on now. Come on, somebody. It's in the Bible. Listen, it's, it's in, in the, Bible. the Word of God. Sex is a gift. Listen to me very carefully, Okay. Sex is a gift. It was created by God. I can see some looks, and they're thinking, I've been in church for some time. I've never heard a pastor talk about sex in church. He created it. God was the originator. He created it. He wrote about it. He gave it to us as a gift within the confines of marriage between a man and a woman. It's kind of like this. You go to a place where you stand before a, like a minister and you exchange vows and you commit to love one another unconditionally. You might exchange rings and then you live happily ever after. It's called marriage. That's what happens. And when you get married, then God gives you the gift. If you use this gift outside of the confines of marriage, listen to me. You are headed down a road of destruction that God cannot bless. Now, if you didn't want to hear truth, shouldn't have come today. <laughs> but here's, here's what you have standing before you is a pastor who loves you, who is going to share the truth with you because he wants your life to prosper and be blessed. Sex is not to be used outside of marriage. It's within the confines of marriage. And it is wonderful, and it's awesome. It's a gift. God gave it to us to bind us together, to keep us close together. Right? And, and if, you, if you weren't here last year, you haven't gone through the series that we did last year called Happily Ever After, uh, I, I encourage you to go back and listen. We did a whole message just on the, the, the emotions and the, and the chemicals biologically, everything that happens, the fireworks internally and spiritually that go off uh, during times of intimacy. God created it to glue us together, to bind us together, just like our relationship with Christ. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Before we move points, I want to tell you, women, your body belongs to him. And his body belongs to you. All right? Now, I know that when you hit the bedroom, for some crazy reason, the moon turns a certain angle and you get a headache all of a sudden. I, I know. I know. But they created Tylenol for a reason. Take one and give it up, buttercup. It is his time. Let's get on with it. I'm saying your body belongs to him. All right. right. Do not withhold from your husband. All right. That's Can right. I hear some amen, men? Can I hear some amen in the house? Come on. They're like, I've never said <laughs> amen, like, but I think like, I will. No, All no, right. No, see, I have to ride home with her. I'm not saying nothing right now. I'm just going to sit here <laughs> right. and you're going to preach. <laughs> well, let me tell you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you to understand something that's in the manual. All right. First Corinthians 7 and 5 says this. Do not. That's pretty strong, right? If you tell your kids, do not. They better do not, right? Or somebody's in trouble. God says very clearly, do not deprive each other of sexual relations unless you both agree to refrain from sexual intimacy for a limited time so that you can give yourselves more cle- completely to prayer. Unless you're praying, girls, the headache needs to stop being the excuse, That's all right? right? Afterward, you should come together again so that Satan won't be able to tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Listen. God had a purpose in it. It wasn't just for pleasure, okay? It wasn't just for procreation. It was the glue. It was the bonding agent that would hold a couple together for life. For life. When you say, I'm mad at you. Like, I don't want to be with you. Get over it. Pray and move past it. The Bible says, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. The reason we have battlefields is we, be, we allow the enemy to drag this wedge. See, before you're married, all you want to do is get into bed. All right? That's all you can think about. Your brains are all about, I just am so attracted. I just want to be with him, right? 
Then you get married and the enemy decides he wants to drive a wedge and keep you apart because he knows that sex is the glue that God intended to hold you together. All right. So when you say to yourself, well, like, I can't even remember the last time we had sex. I can't even remember. Let me tell you something. That's the reason you have a battleground because when you come together, you are honestly doing exactly what God intended when he put that covenant agreement together. I know that you're thinking, like, I've never heard this. I'm telling you, go back and listen to part four, Happily Ever After. We went through every bit of it, and it's so amazing when you understand that the reason it was made for marriage is because you're glued to the other person for life. The reason we have so many broken people Mm -hmm. and so many people on medication for depression is because we have glued ourselves with multiple people and we've ripped ourselves apart. That's true. And there are, we are broken and hurting people. And then we, we come together and we're, we're finally, we think we found the one and we're ready to get married and we are broken, destroyed people. If you are single, guys, I'm telling you, it's not because God's a killjoy. It's because he is the one who designed the plan. He made the van. He's the one who created the covenant, and he knows how best it will function. If you want to have an awesome marriage, you got to follow the manual. That's right. And I know there's some guys in this room. Yeah, come on. Some guys in this room. I can hear your conversation with your wife tonight. I can hear it. You know know, what the Bible says. I was thinking about, uh, you know, we've been attending that church for quite some time. And I was kind of teetering as to whether or not to make that our home church, but but I'm really feeling like that, that is a good is a good church today. is a good church to be a part of because the man preacher today said uh, that we need to have more sex and it's biblical and it's in the Bible. So I'm kind of feeling yeah like like this is good preaching and I like this I like this church. I'm thinking we're gonna stay here for a while, right? I'm hearing it. Now I'm gonna get you. Ready? Ouch. Now I'm going to get you. Pornography is not how God designed sex. It was meant to be between a husband and his wife. It's a beautiful thing, but man, you can get yourself in a mess really, really, really fast. And in a world full of, where's the phone? Full of technology. I know we're inundated with it. It's these images and these pictures and videos are just a click away. I'm telling you, I know, I understand. I'm a man myself, but you've got to guard yourself against the pleasures of this world. And you've got to keep yourself pure. You have to keep yourself focused. This is where it's at right here, right? And, and honestly, everything that God intended for good, the enemy tries to twist mm-hmm. for evil. Yeah. And when the same bonding that happens during intimacy, all right, when you're looking at pornography and you fulfill yourself through pornography, you are binding yourself to that image. That's to, why to it's lie. so addictive and it is a straight real. lie. And the enemy knows it. And yeah. it is one of the biggest industries today because guess why? It can all be done in the dark. Mm-hmm. Just be done in the dark. But that's where the enemy hangs out. All right? So, man, that's and it's why. Con- and it's convenient. And, and there's no, there, listen, there's no emotion, there's no strings attached to that. You don't have, man, you don't have to I be romantic. You don't have to be romantic. You don't have to fight hard to do what's right. You don't have to win her over. It is a quick, easy process where you can move into pleasure fast, okay? But God created a marriage because he wants us to work at it. He wants us to, to, to go through life together, and it's hard. But when we, when we get together, it, it, it takes two. But I'm telling you, it takes teamwork to make the dream work. And when you tap into that and you realize what it can be, you will be blown away at how awesome marriage is. It doesn't have to be mediocre. It can be unimaginable. All right, and the final thing is this. Get on the same page. Finances, communication, and infidelity are the top three reasons and have been for years and years and years and years and years for divorce. When we talk about communication and getting on the same page, we're not talking about talking, all right? Because talking, people can talk and the other person not listen and it doesn't even matter. And you can even talk and listen, but if you don't really listen with the intent of understanding what the other person is saying, You're never going to get on the same page, all right? So when it comes down to communication, it is about 
listening when they talk and really trying to understand where they're coming from, even when it stings, all right? When they're saying something that stings because you really are kind of guilty of being a nag. And man, I don't want to be told I'm being a nag, but doggone it, if it's not true, I probably have told him 10 times to do that one thing. And maybe if I would just shut up, he might actually do it. But since I keep saying it, he's determined not to do it. You know what I'm saying? The Bible talks about that. It's better to live on a rooftop than with a naggy wife. All right? You got to you gotta listen to understand. The Bible says this, James 1 and 19, you must be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Guys, if you don't want to live on a battlefield, you want there to be peace in your home, you want to have a healthy, fulfilled marriage where you really love each other and you're best friends and your kids. Listen, this is, this is so, I have four kids, all right? I want my kids to see our marriage and I want them to understand what a model marriage is. I don't want them to go through life and have a bad marriage. I don't want them to get connected with someone and give themselves away. I don't want those things for them. We live out in front of our children because my greatest desire is for all four of my kids to have the same kind of marriage that I have before God. All right? Same thing for you. Your kids are watching your every move. Amen. I hope this has been helpful today. We want to pray with you and ask God to bless you. And again, if you're a single, I want God to bless the season that you're in. Your marriage, I want God to bless that. Um, but we just want to pray with you today and, and ask God to, to apply his word to your life. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm so thankful, God, for every individual that is in this place. And you know where each individual is at in their life. You know where they're at in their relationships, Father God. I pray, God, that you would search our hearts and know us. I pray that you would reveal if there's anything in us, God, that we need to change or make better that would bring you pleasure and bring you joy in our lives. I pray uh, for our singles in the house, God, that they would remain pure and that they would spend this time in their season, those who are not married, that they would spend this time growing in their relationship with you as they are pure and undefiled, setting themselves apart, God, uh, from from that that uh, from moving into relationships, Father God, where they're not married. I pray, God, that you would bless those who are married, that you would put a spark in their marriage again, Father God. Let them run to your word. Let the men love their wives and let the women respect and come under the mission of their husbands, Father God. I pray also, Lord, for those that maybe they've lost a spouse. Uh, Father God, I pray for healing right now in Jesus' name. I just pray, God, that you would preserve them and I pray that you would uh, walk beside them, God, through this journey, whether they ever remarry or not. God, I pray that you would be enough for them, that they would put their hope and their trust and their their love in you and you alone. God, we bless you and we thank you, God, for what you're doing in this place. Your head's bowed and your eyes still closed. I just want to tell you that the first relationship that God wants to have with you is that you would completely surrender your life and begin to walk out of friendship with him. We get really caught up in wanting to have these relationships with other people because they're tangible and in front of us. But we'll never have a healthy, fulfilled relationship in humanity if we don't first have a relationship with Jesus Christ. So this morning, I want to give you that opportunity. Jesus laid down his life so that you and I, our sins could be covered and we could have a relationship, a connection, a friendship with God. So this morning, I just want to ask you, with every head bowed and all the eyes here closed, if you're here today and you would say, you know what? I want a real relationship with God. I don't want to just come to church. I don't want just something superficial. I don't want to just know God. I want what you're talking about. I want a real relationship with God. It can start today. Will you just throw your hand in the air? If that's you and you want that today, we're going to lead you in a very simple prayer in just a moment. But it all starts by just saying yes. Amen. I see your hand. Anybody else? You say, I'm ready. Man, I see your hand. I want a real relationship. Church, we're going to pray together because nobody stands alone at this church. We all repeat after me. Say, Father God, I love you. Father God, I love you. And I thank you. I thank you. That you sent Jesus. That you sent Jesus. To give his life for me. To give his life for me. I thank you that you loved me enough. I thank you that you loved me enough. That you bridged the gap. You bridged the gap. So I could have a relationship with you. So I could have a relationship with you. Jesus, I ask that you come into my heart. Jesus, I ask that you would come into my heart. That you would forgive me of all my sins. That you would forgive me of all my sins. I want to have a real relationship with you. I want to have a real relationship with you. I want you to change my life. I want you to change my life.
want you to change my life. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you, if you just made that decision, it is by far the best decision you will ever make in your life. And we want to give you a gift today. It's called our Next Step Kit. It's in the green bag as you're leaving on the left. This has a brand new Bible in it because this is your manual, not only to marriage, but all of life. It also tells you, what is my next step? What do I do now that I said yes to Jesus? All right, will you just put your hands together and celebrate with those who just made that decision? Woo-hoo! Hey, thanks for joining us today. We sincerely hope the message impacted your life. Stay connected with us by following us online, or you can find us on Facebook. If you would like to partner with us financially, we have a few easy ways to give. You can text your giving to 77977 and simply type in MMC and follow the prompts. Or you could find us online at www.mountainmoverschurch.org and click the Give Now tab. Or you could simply mail your giving in to 24000 South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma 74344. We are a church leading people into a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ that is contagious. We look forward to seeing you next week.